Okay, so let's do an example of a graph of a hyperbola and finding the details um, of a hyperbola that is not centered at the origin. So let me just make it up. Y minus 2 squared over 9 minus x plus 3 squared. That's a 2. Actually, I'm just going to leave it minus x minus 3 squared equal to 1. And what does that mean? That means that it's x plus 3 squared. If, it, if there's no denominator, technically it's over 1, right? All right, so let's start with the center. What is the center of this hyperbola? How do I know it's a hyperbola? I'm subtracting a set of addition, and it's in this form. 1 is here. Now, be careful with this, because notice that the y, y stuff is leading. So my, my center, my ordered pair, has the x-coordinate following x and the y-coordinate following y, the opposite of those values. So my center is actually negative 3, comma 2. So be careful that you don't accidentally use this as your x-coordinate and always take the opposite. I've done that before. Because the y is leading, my transverse axis is vertical. And my a squared is always the first denominator, so in this case, a is 3, and my b squared is the second, b is 1, square root of those denominators, a and b. And then you'll probably be asked to find the vertices, or not, whatever, and then the foci, and then the equation of the asymptotes. So we'll find all that just in case you're asked for any of that anyway. So what I like to do is start graphing from here, because sometimes it's easier once you have a visual to then finish the rest of it. So let's go to the graph here. And again, I'm counting by ones. So 2, negative 2, 2, negative 2. Hopefully I have a large enough graph. If I don't, I'll add to it. Start with the center, which is negative 3, 2. So 1, 2, 3, 2. So approximately here is my center. Okay, so it looks like maybe I might need a little more. We'll see. So in case you need to label things. Okay, um, let's go to my vertices, right? So my A, my A represents the distance from the center to a vertex. And my, um, my transverse axis is vertical. So from the center, I go up and down because the transverse axis is vertical. Up and down A units. So up three units. One, two, three here is a vertex. And down three units. One, two, three is a vertex. So this is the ordered pair, negative three, five one vertex, and this is the ordered pair, negative three, negative one, another vertex, and I'm just gonna verify that. Now it makes sense that my x coordinate would stay the same because I'm going up and down, and the y coordinate should be um, plus and minus three added on to the y coordinate of the center, so plus three and then minus three, so that works. Let's finish the graph. Um, again, b is only used for the box that will help me determine how wide the hyperbola is opening, and I'm B units. I'm going to the right and left one unit. So one here and one here. Again, only to get my box. You know, B doesn't really give me anything in terms of like, well, other than my asymptotes and such. It just gives me this box, which goes through the center, right? And the edges of the box. Those are my asymptotes, and the box helps me determine how wide this is. So notice this is not as wide as the last example that I did, right? These are kind of not as wide. They're closer together. So the yellow graph is the graph of my hyperbola. The green is just used to find that. Now, the asymptotes, let's say you're asked for the equation of the asymptotes, right? Notice that, you know, to get to from the center to, let's say, the edge of this asymptote, i got to go up A and over B, right? Up A and over B. So Y minus K, Y minus 2, or Y is equal to K, 2 plus or minus A over B over B over A, X minus uh, H, X plus 3. Is this A over B or B over A? What did I say? I said we're going, um, where is it? This one. We're going up A and over B. A over B. What was A? 3 over B over 1 which typically I'm not going to write as 3 or 1, I'm just going to write as 3. 
So these are the equations of the asymptotes. And I can manipulate this to have you know, a different form if I want to, but that's the equation of the asymptote, both of them. Um, now the foci, let's talk about that. I need C to find um, those ordered pairs. So um, to find C, put it in red, we have a relationship between A, B, and C, A squared plus B squared is C squared, for A, uh, for a hyperbola is plus, for an ellipse it's minus, a squared is 9, plus b squared is 1, is c squared. So c is the square root of 10. And the square root of 10 is between 3 and 4. Again, closer to 3 this time. But what do I do? I'm going to go, because the transverse axis is vertical, I'm going to go up and down square root of 10 units from the center. And I'm going to go, it should be greater than 3. 1, 2, 3. So a little bit greater than 3. So the focus is a little bit closer. 1, 2, 3. Uh, from here. One, two, three. It's a little bit closer to the vertices here, right? Because they're opening, um, they're not as wide as the other case, they're opening closer. So this is where the focus foci are. Again, within the curves, right? If they're not in the curves, then you did something wrong. And I'm adding and subtracting the square root of 10 to the y coordinate of c, right? Up and down. So the x coordinate will stay the same. And the y-coordinate is going to be added and subtracted, square root of 10, to get to the, fo the foci. So the center is negative 3, 2. Transverse axis is vertical because I'm starting with the y stuff. And then I would go and use my a and b to graph my, my case. And then from there, you can identify vertices, foci, asymptote, whatever um, you might be asked to find.